All right. Um, my son is 15 and he talks constantly, reporting about cars, where they are made, what company makes them, and endless other details. How can we get him to talk about something else? Well, I think we've talked about this. It's not about getting him initially to talk about something else. It's really about how can we get him to expand about cars. Okay, so you could you could expand about cars. We actually had such a child who came here, believe it or not, who was very much into cars, talked about cars, would talk about the emblems of cars, would draw them. And so as we played and as we interacted and as we talked and we got into the bubble of cars and, and you know, some people, you know, maybe maybe you're one of them or your partner is one of these who loves cars and goes to car shows, who who upholsters cars, who refurbishes cars. There's a whole world out there of people who just love cars. So part of it is is seeing that okay, your child's into cars and they're very repetitious about it. I want to help them expand that co topic of conversation. So when you're in your room with them or in that quiet focused space and you're talking about cars, think of different ways that you can expand it. And what we did with one particular child is um, we got we got a bunch of pictures of different cars. And he would say, oh, I love these types of cars. Oh, we have this car and this car and this car. And we, pre we, we, we presented the different cars to him that we kind of cut out. Then what we did is, okay, now we're going to make a supercar. And we're going to cut a bit off this car, a bit off this one, and we're going to put it together and make the most perfect car in the world that would just have the best wheels, the best steering wheel the best color. And so we designed a car. It's just one idea of expanding. And this child went along with it, was very excited about it, had never done something like that before. So they allowed variation into it. We talked about what, why we like certain cars. So we started to talk about something personal, things that we like and what we dislike. And if we were going in a car, would we like to go fast or slow? And we talked about this and we interacted and we described what we liked and what we didn't like. And so there was a huge interaction. So you're not looking to say, stop it. The repetitious, uh, repetitious behavior is not the enemy. All right? It's not the enemy. It's the doorway. Go into it. Enjoy it. And expand from within. All right? Next question. Um, what if you try to join, in our case, our son's self-talk, and he says, stop and won't let you? How do I be in the bubble? If he walks away when he is being exclusive with the self-talk and won't let me in. Okay. Here's the thing. When your child's talking, a couple of things to check on. If they're doing their self-talk over and over and over and over again. Um, maybe they're talking about, let's see, paper cups. I like paper cups, and when I stack paper cups, or they get higher, I can drink from paper cups. You know, I can clap paper cups together. Let's say they're talking about paper cups. Then, if you're talking about paper cups like this, I like paper cups, they're good too, and I can stack mine. Look how tall I'm doing mine. You're not really joining. What's happening is you're actually trying to interfere and get your child to pay attention to you, which is different than joining. Joining is actually doing the same activity, enjoying it, and letting your enjoyment of the activity shine out so that your child notices it and sees it and then they become interested in you. You don't have to make your child more interested. By you joining, they're more likely to do it. So a couple of things you can do here. So be aware of your attitude, how you're feeling. Are you trying to get in on their talking? Are you standing too close? Maybe you're just a bit too loud because you're too close. They're trying to hear themselves talk. And then you're talking louder than them and really close to them and in their face, then they're going to say, stop, cut it out, back away. Because what they're saying is, hey, mom, dad, the joining, how you're joining with me doesn't work for me. Can you change it? Can you do something different? So what you want to do is try joining really quietly. I'm over the other side of the room, okay, as I do this. Um, maybe I'm not looking at them directly. Maybe I'm off to the side doing this so I'm not focused right on them. So I'm showing them, I'm showing them I'm here. I'm not trying to get you to stop. I'm not trying to get you or make you or, or that you have to look at me. I'm just trying to show you I'm here. I'm loving your world. And when you're ready, 
just pay attention to me, just see me, I love you. And so that's what you're trying to do as you join. Now if your child says, stop, cut it out, takes your cups away, you say, absolutely, thank you for telling me, I, I, I won't do that. There was, I remember one particular father who, um, uh, he wouldn't listen to what his child was saying, would say, and then his child would, and eventually, what actually, eventually what happened is the, the mom said, okay, I'm kicking you out of the program for two weeks. And it is what? Oh. So the dad came out of the program for two weeks. When he went back in, his childhood was used to his dad not listening. But his dad was different now and says, okay, no, I'm going to listen to you. I'm going to show that I'm responsive to you. And so, he, so his dad said, uh, so the, actually his child said, uh, sit on the chair. So he sat on the chair. And then he kept him on the chair for the first few sessions. He wouldn't let him up. And he really had to show his son that he wasn't going to get up. A couple of times he'd go like this and his child would say, sit down. <laughs> and he'd sit back down. And so he'd sit back down his child would be out isming and doing his things. And he would do the best he could, loving him from this place. He, um, if your child says stop talking, you could stop talking, but you can still go with the cups. Like this, I can pretend I have cups. She says, "Don't move your hands. Don't move, I don't move my hands." And my child wants to uh, say, "Stop altogether. Don't say anything. Don't move your mouth. Just sit there. Don't do a thing." Then I say, "Absolutely, I'd love to." And then I sit there, and as I watch them, I'm loving them. I'm accepting them and saying, "It's okay. I will give you control." You're thinking all these things. You're not saying it. And then what you do is you give it five minutes and then you just gently come back and maybe with your fingers you just start doing the cup and talk and you just do it subtly and small and you build and that's what you do. Alright? Always give control because that's what they want. And when they say no, they're wanting control in that way. Alright? Alright, let's go to another question. Um, ooh! This is a good one. This comes up quite frequently. My son, nine years old, can't cope with losing in games. I know a lot of people can't do that. Because of this, he often refuses to play games that he enjoys for fear of losing. If he does play and lose, he insists on playing over and over again until he wins. How do we help him? Oh, that's a great question. That's a great question. Well, first of all, you want to play games and make Winning fun and losing fun. All right. So what you do here is this. So let's say he wins. You say, "Yeah, you won." Hey, guess what? I came second. Yes. Because we live in a culture where winning counts, and if you don't win, you're nobody. And so winning is everybody gets cheered and celebrated. You won. You won. What about the person who just showed up and played, who was there and enjoyed the game and the activity? What about that person? So what you're wanting to do is de-emphasize, take off the, wow, winning is so key and so important and so crucial, and really start to focus on, hey, you know what, I had the best time playing with you. You know what, I love you. Hey, you know what, I cheered you for winning. Hey, how about cheering me for, uh, for playing with you too? Cheer me. Yay, I played, I came second. You could even have a cuddly toy involved, too. Hey, cuddly toy, you came third. Good job. Yay. Let's give medals. Okay, let's give the first person you won. Yay. And then the second one, you won, too. Yay. And what I'm doing is making the whole thing. I'm not making number one, the winner, special. I'm just making everybody special. That is so wonderful and so beautiful to play. And winning is wonderful, too. But it's actually playing and having friends and having someone to play with and being friends together that really matters and really counts in the big picture. And so I'm not I'm gonna de emphasize the whole winning thing. And if I'm gonna play a few games like that and then I'll play a game where he loses and I'm gonna cheer him, Hey, you thank you for playing with me. It's so good you play with me. Thank you so so much. It's so great. And so you cheer so you cheer so you cheer him, um, and that's what he's gonna start to take in is wow, it's being second, being third, and also winning is good. So you want to start to create that kind of sensation around winning. Don't avoid it. 
in your in your playroom, your focus room, create games and activities that will help him learn these skills. These important these are important friendship skills. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Question about Jade and the treatment we did with her. Okay. You said earlier that your daughter is fully recovered now, thanks to some treatment you did. Can you tell me which? I know all about ABA and other similar techniques, but those seem to be more appropriate for children that have classic autism. What do you think about the damn protocol for Asperger's children? My son isn't vaccinated. Okay. What we did, the main thing we did with Jade to help her... Um, her recovery from autism was actually focus on her number one challenge, her ability to socialize and connect and relate. And what we did, we didn't teach her, we didn't just focus on, um, oh, she, she must be able to sit in a chair, she must be able to hold a fork. We focused on social interaction. We focused on having a relationship. We believed first and foremost that she could definitely, definitely look in your eyes more. She could definitely, definitely um, put two words together, three words together, speak in sentences, to have conversations, that she could be flexible within an interaction. I believe, we believe that she could do these things. And so what we did was we applied all the techniques of the Sunrise program, um, everything that uh, we teach at our, our startup program, uh, and we teach in our advanced training programs and in our other literature. Um, again, I encourage you to go to well, on our website if you're not already on our website. Lots of information. But the main focus is social interaction and really focusing on the four fundamentals of social interaction. Eye contact, communication, verbal communication, interactive attention span, and flexibility. Those are the four fundamentals. If you go on our website, we have a developmental model which you will be able to then look at, pinpoint where your child is, and then you can see what social skills you're wanting to help them develop more. We did other stuff too. And Jay, we did dietary inter intervention too. We, um, we did uh, gluten and casein free diet. We did remove all sugars from a diet. Um, includes glucose, fructose, um, artificial additives, and preservatives. We um, did all of these different things with her, and we kept her on this diet because in terms of helping her. So we're going to do something outside, helping her with an intervention, the Sunrise program, which was profound and, and meaningful to her. We did that, but we also had to make sure inside her body that uh, she was set up because she did have allergies. We had allergy testing done, blood work done on it. Her, we had stool samples taken, urine sample, hair samples. We had all of this stuff so that we could create a diet that would create an internal environment that was as calm and as easy um, for her to make those neurological changes. Because if a child is wired out on sugar, then it's going to be hard to focus, hard to make those changes, hard to practice putting those uh, neurological pathways into uh, action. So those are the types of that's the type of stuff that we did with her. All right. So yeah, um, we do. We are strong advocates of yes. Dietary intervention is a key part of running a sunrise program. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. How can we teach my son to act more normal around other kids? He's 12 and he really wants friends, but I can tell by now he acts how he ra acts around other kids, like at the town pool, that they think he is weird. But he does not seem to know he's acting strange. When I tell him no to some things that annoy people, he, he nods his head but continues to do it. Well, there's a number of things. The work, where the work needs to be done is at home with dedicated time. That's where you're going to get the changes at the pool, at the garden, in, in the garden. You're going to get the changes in the park. You're going to see changes in school. Is by doing an intervention at home. If by, by doing this intervention, by doing, um, if you haven't already started your program, doing 30 minutes a day, joining in those repetitious behaviors. What's happening is he's not taking in what you're saying. At the pool, for example, he could be so overwhelmed by it all already that it's a lot of stimulation. He's doing his best to get by, and then you say, hey, don't do this, and he's like, okay, okay, and it's just too much for him, versus help him at home. 
Do the work at home. Do the practice at home. Practice it again and again and again. So that when you come to the pool, he more knows what to do. He feels more seated and more settled and more centered in the set social interaction. So that he can handle those situations. And doing it in place, yes, you can guide him. But ultimately, if you're really wanting him to make the, 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 the deep changes you want him to do, run your program at home, do a program. Again, start with 30 minutes to start with. All right? All right. Um, okay, let's go to... Um, whenever we try to ask my daughter a question, how was your day, or what were you doing in your room, she answered with preset paragraphs from movies she has watched or shows she has seen. It's like, it's like no matter what we ask, she only answers in script. What can we do? Well, the first thing you do is you, you say, I'm getting an answer. This is fabulous. At least I'm getting an answer. Because I can tell you, there are children you can ask that question of, and they won't give you an answer. They won't try and put together a way to answer you and give you some sort of response. They won't say anything. So the first thing to do is to say, at least she's a answering me. At least she's being social. She at least, okay, she's doing a script from a movie that she's watched, from a Disney movie. Who knows? She, uh, you know, who, who, Saving Nemo. She could be doing a script from there where she knows that's the reply you put in. Because what she's doing is interacting. She is interacting, but there's a, a superficialness where she's putting in what she, the, the certain scripts that she's learned. What you're wanting to do, and what will help her make it more interactive, is by you cheering and celebrating the fact that she did answer. Thank you for answering me. You know, and that sounds like it was from Nemo. I'm sure Nemo had a good time too. Thank you so much. And so I cheer it, I celebrate it, I have fun with it. And then, then what I might want to do then is I can ask her, okay, if, she's, if I said, what did you do in the room today? And she said, we went swimming around the pool. And maybe she says that. And you said, oh my God, that's so fun. You went swimming around the pool. Oh my God, like this, swimming around the pool. Maybe what you do is then you come in and you ask a more specific question. Now I know you were in there with Betty and you were playing with the balls. What were you doing with the balls? Maybe nailing it down into a more specific, more narrower question to begin with versus, hey, what did you do in the room? Well, she might be thinking, well, there's, uh, uh, I was in there for a whole hour. That's 60 minutes. That's so many thousands of seconds. God, which second do you want? You know, so really helping your child nail it down and ask, asking within a more confined question will be more useful and more helpful. All right, so look, if I said to you, how was your day? So it's good. Hey, but if I say to you, how was your day when you picked up your children from school? I remember this lady was there and she was looking at you in a particular way when your son came over. Then you might be able to answer it a bit more specifically versus, oh, it was a go roll, it was a good day. So it's the same with your children. You're going to help them narrow down and help them be uh, able to answer a question by being more specific. First, celebrate it. Enjoy it. Know you're getting an answer. Have fun with what you might do. And then what you do is you maybe ask more specific questions. You may also, too, want to ask your question when your child is really interested in answering the question. If they're already off scripting or isming and you ask them a question, they might just throw you a bone and they're not really that interested in answering the question. You want to wait till you have a connection and you have an interaction. All right, so let's see. We have a few more moments left. Uh, let's see if I can get another question in. Uh, let's see. How do, how do you stop, how do I stop, or how do you stop my Asperger's son tapping his bottom or pulling down his shorts in the pool of someone else's? He finds this amusing. He is seven years old. Oh, I'm sure he does find it amusing because I'm sure what happens is everybody up around him lights up like a Christmas tree. 
like, no, no, you're going to pull it, no, no, pull it up. And, and people come running from the other side of the pool, and it's a whole big thing. And so if he's wanting some amusement, then he's going to pull down his shorts. So number one is, again, I can't underline this more, work with him at home. Focus time is going to change those types of behaviors. It's going to help your child understand you don't do that. At this point, he doesn't understand. He doesn't care. He's in his own world. And so the way to do that is help him deepen him, deepen his sense of social interaction, this understanding the social fabric of being in a pool. And so, but if you do take him to the pool, maybe you don't take him with people around. Maybe what you do is then when he does this, you don't make a big deal of it. You walk over without saying, no, don't do that. Say to the friend, because a lot of times parents can feel embarrassed in front of the friend and feel like they must um, show their friends that they're good parents and they're going to scold their child and they're going to tell their child off. And the child doesn't understand it. You know, they think they're just having fun because everybody comes over running. So explain to your friends, hey, my child might do this. And then you come over because it's all this big reaction that's actually encouraging it and reinforcing it. And uh, you want to really show you that your child that that's, that's not going to happen. So you want to come over nice and calm and say, come on, let's pull your shorts up. No big deal. And then get on and play. So that would be it. Do that and then at home. Now, this is all we have time for. But I, I do want to say, I want to share, just recap with you. Um, and I want to start with just reading a, a, a quote here. And, and this is a mother who had a high-functioning ch child, who had a child with Asperger's. Um, and, the, the, and really, it really sh speaks to what you can get and what you can create for yourself. Because a lot of times people say, okay, um, what can I do for my child? I think if for those who are watching for the first time, come to a training program. I can't underline that even more. I mean, it's so important. And this is what one mother wrote. She has an 11-year-old son. He has Asperger's syndrome. And this is what she said. Attending the Sunrise Program Startup completely changed the way I plan to approach teaching my child. Before, our emphasis was largely academic because, Jake's high function, because of Jake's high-functioning capabilities. I overlooked a lot of social issues hoping that if he did well in school, that he would eventually just outgrow the social problems. Your child has Asperger's. Your child has high functioning. I think it's the fortunate few whose child outgrow those types of behaviors. I think you can do something. We believe you can do something to really help your child. And I know for those who are watching who have been to our training programs, you're doing it and seeing the benefits of that. For those who have not been to our program, I really encourage you to, to go to our website, get yourself an initial call, speak to our, one of our family counselors, because you can do something. Um, come to our website. Our website is www.autismtreatment, well that's all one word, autismtreatment.org, or give us a phone call, 413-229. 2100, and if you're outside of the United States, you'll have to find the dialing code. I think it's 001. If you're dialing from the UK, you'd have to find it from your particular country. Um, or you can call if you're in the United States or, or Canada, I think it's 1 877 766 7473. But if you didn't catch that, go to our website, www autismtreatment.org all the information will be there all the phone numbers lots more information besides so um, hey it's been a real pleasure talking with you sharing with you uh, we, we from everybody here we believe you can do a, an amazing thing with your child um, just applying just these sim three simple strategies we believe will make a difference so Thank you, and have a great rest of the day with your child. Thank you.